G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again with the last video for our Unity 360 Tours series. So this one here, we're going to be creating sort of a virtual tour, I suppose you could say. And I've also been using a very similar thing for point and click adventure games with some of my classes. So what you're going to need for this one is a fair bit. If you haven't seen any of the previous videos, they're all linked down in the description. Please go look at them because there's a fair bit of setup that you need to do at the very beginning at least to be able to use this. If you've done the first one setting up your computer, you can jump straight into this one afterwards. But what I'm going to do, let's create a brand new project. And as this is creating, I'm then going to go grab all the things that we're going to need. So virtual tour, I'm going to call it. I'm going to hit create project. It's on my desktop, nice and easy to find. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go to the description of this video and find the link which gives you the download for, sorry, I'll just open up the folder, this one here, 360 Tour Assets. So what this includes is just two simple files, a shader and a sphere changer script. So first things first, let's extract those. So extract all, extract, and then I'm going to drag those two files down into my assets, like so. And when I see them appear, I go back a folder, Oops, and delete what it generated. Okay, once you've done that, we then need to go and download what's called the Google VR SDK. And this includes a fair few files that we're going to utilize just to make our project so much easier to do. So click on the big blue button. This link is also in the description of the video, by the way, just underneath the zip file. Once that's downloaded, it's only 18 meg, it's nice and quick. Hit that one. And it's going to decompress straight into your Unity project. Now, there's only one folder I don't want to include in this one, and that one is demos, because it's a little bit bigger and we don't need any of it. The rest of it I do need. Now, if you want to look at the demos, like look at the built-in Google Virtual Reality levels and models, for all, by all means, keep that ticked and hit import. But I'm going to untick it for the moment. Now, while it's doing that, we're going to do the last thing, and that is grabbing the 360 images that are going to go on our spheres. So for this particular video, I am just going, I've just gone to Google, gone to the images, typed in 360 images. And this one here is one of the best 360 images I have found on the web. Okay, so I'm going to right click on this guy. I'm going to save as, and I'm just going to put it straight into my assets folder. Okay, so you see I'm on the desktop, virtual tour, assets. All right. The second picture, because obviously we're going to be traveling between different 360 images or videos by that one, um, in the same turn, I'm going to grab a second one here of Italy, which is quite beautiful, I think. All right. Once you've got all of that stuff, we need then something that's going to be in your scenes that we can click on. Now, you can use parts of the scene if you really want to, but you're going to have to open up the picture in something like Photoshop and extract that part of the picture out. And then we have to superimpose it in Unity. I'll get to what I mean by that later on. So I'm going to do something really simple here. I'm going to type bird transparent. And this one right here I've used in a lot of examples in my class because it's got a nice transparent background. So I'm going to save that one into my assets folder as well. I'm just going to call it bird. All right, and then we're ready to go. Now, if I wanted heaps of different things that I can click on to send me in heaps of different locations, I would go and get more pictures. But for right now, I think we've got enough. So this is a mess. So the first step before I even create our level is we're just going to organize all these assets because we're going to end up with a lot, especially if you have more than just two 360 images and lots of things to click on. So I'm going to have a folder called Textures and drag Italy and Venice in there. I'm going to have another folder called Sprites for the birdie. Uh, another folder for Scripts. I'm going to drag the sphere changer into that one. And the final folder for the moment, we are actually going to make another one later. Shaders, and just put the shader in there. Now, chances are, I'm only going to make one script and one shader for this project, but you people might include more, depending if you want like audio to play in the background and different things and animations to occur. But it's time to actually set up our level. And what I'm <coughs> excuse me, going to do is I'm going to delete the directional light because all these pictures don't include, we don't want a lighting source from Unity on them. Second thing I'm going to do is reset our camera position so it's smack bang in the middle of our world and we can just start using it. Now, what we want to do is I want to set up using the Google VR and Unity a bit of a, an environment where I can simulate being on a phone. Okay, and it's really easy to do. What I'm going to do is quickly go to file and go to the build settings like I did in the previous videos. 
and I'm gonna hit the Android platform and switch. And don't forget, if you can't see these settings, it means you haven't installed the Android plugin for Unity. Okay, and the second thing we'll do is go to the player settings and make sure all those are set up. Just have to wait for this to finish. All right, then over here, give it a company name. Dingle Education sounds good. Okay, coming down, we need to make sure we've got virtual reality supported. Click the plus and add your cardboard. And the other two settings are the package name. So net.dingle.edu, because why not? And then the minimum API, I have 4.4 on my computer. If you have a higher version, then click on that. If you have a lower version 4.4, you actually need to install at least 4.4 and above. All right, once you've got that, that's actually set up for virtual reality and ready to package up your application. But to get the editor set up so it's like using a phone and moving your head around, it's in this little Google VR folder that we can find a few handy, handy things. So if we go to prefabs, okay, this is editor emulator. Okay, and I'm gonna drag that in and without doing anything, okay, I'm just gonna hit play. And you can actually hold down on the alt key and move the mouse. And this actually negates the purpose of my mouse look script from the previous videos. Now I actually think it's a lot nicer as well. The second thing you could do with this um, emulator is hold the control key and you can do your pitch and your sort of movement, like you're moving your head left and right. Okay, so without doing much at all, you drag that in and it starts working perfectly. Before we go too far, I have to do two more things in these folders. I'm gonna to go to the UI folder. I'm gonna grab the event system, drag that in, and that allows us to interact with different objects using the cardboard. And the last thing here is grab the reticle pointer and chuck that on top of the camera. Okay, so make sure that's on the camera. When we start, you'll see that we now get a lovely little white dot. And the great thing is, Google's already set it up that if you mouse over something that's clickable, it will expand and give you some kind of feedback that you can click on that object. It's really, really handy and easy to use. Now, for us to get this uh, event system working, I actually have to drag in one more thing, so I sort of lied before. But I'm gonna go to back to the Google VR folder, go to scripts, go to event system, and I'm gonna grab the GVR pointer physics raycaster script and drop it onto the event system, okay? Just make sure that's there, and if you've done that, you're all good to go. We're just gonna set up our level like we did in the previous uh, projects. So first step first, actually, no, I stuffed up a couple of things here. I, we've got two more things to do. Actually, the first thing is when you're moving a camera in virtual reality, you're not allowed to move the camera object because Unity does a very special thing with it. I actually have no idea what it is. It's just, if you read the documentation, it tells you don't try and move the camera. You actually have to put the camera on a tripod and then you move the tripod around. Okay, and for all reasons, I don't know why, but let's do that now. I'm gonna right click down here. I'm gonna create an empty object and straight away call it tripod. Just make sure before you do any of this too, before you move on, that your position is all zeros across the board and that the camera is all zeros across the board as well. And I'm just gonna drag the camera onto the tripod. And that's all we need to do for that one there. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to chuck a 3D object in front of the camera so it blocks out our vision completely. And this is going to be an object I use for a very cheap fade in and fade out effect, okay? It's very simple to set up and it's very simple to code as well. So there are scripts you can go and get that are hundreds of lines long which allow you to do this properly, but I think what's the point when you can do it really simply and it actually is pretty effective. So what I'm gonna to do to create this fade in and fade out object is right click on the main camera Go to 3D object and create a quad. And straight away you'll see the quad appear in the middle of the camera. And I'm gonna grab this blue line and drag it to a point. This is why I like the game playing up here, by the way. But if it's tucked under the scene like this, you're not gonna be able to see what I see. So I'm gonna drag it over there. As soon as the camera goes like that, as soon as you see you can't see any more on the camera, that's how you know you've got the sweet spot. Okay, don't go too far out so it's like this. Make sure you just got it. At this point, we're gonna go very drastic. I'm gonna to go to my scaling mode. So click on this bad boy and scale it right up so we make sure that they cannot see at all. Okay, this step is very, very important. We're gonna set up the object by calling it Fader with a capital F. If you do not do this, my script will actually not work properly. Second thing is take out the mesh collider because we don't want it to collide with anything. And now what we're gonna do is set up a material so this thing is see-through at the beginning of the game. 
Okay, so now I'm going to make another folder. So let's right click, create folder, materials, and inside here I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to call it Fader because I'm that inventive. And over here I'm going to change it from a standard shader down to sprites default. Okay, and then I'm just going to give it a color. So I'm going to make it black. And I'm also going to turn the L, I'll, I'll drag it on first so you can see the results. I'll drag the material on. But I also want to drag the alpha value down to zero. Okay, the good thing about the sprites default shader is that it doesn't accept light from anything. Okay, so it's just a solid color for the entirety of it. So when it fades out, then you'll just see a solid bit of black and it won't be influenced by any other colors in the entire game. Right? And that's as simple as that. So we've got an invisible object that when we change spheres, it's going to go black and then it'll fade out into the new sphere. So there'll be a nice little transition effect there. All right, and time for no more lies. It's time to set up our spheres like we've done in the previous ones. So I'm gonna create a sphere up here. I'm gonna reset it straight away to get it in the middle of my world. And the scale is going to be three, three, three for all my spheres for this particular one. Okay, and it's time to create our new material, which is our inside out one. Oh, actually, before we continue, sorry, I'm gonna call it sphere one. Get rid of the sphere collider. Okay, that's a pretty important step. Don't forget that either. And then we create the material for it. So let's call this inside out material. Oh, I'll just call it inside out. Might be a little bit confusing, but it's simple. And it's change its shader standard to inside out. Drag it on first. Okay, and once you see this, that means you're ready to drop on one of your 360 pictures like so. Okay, so it's really simple and easy to do. Okay, once you've got that, I suggest actually playing the game and then trying out your little angle. You see, we've got the little reticle in the middle. Let me poke this guy in the eye. All right, it is time to drop in the objects that we can click on. And this is really easy. And it's the reason why I use the GVR event system. So I'm gonna to go to my sprites folder where my bird is and fix him up first because this is horrible. So change the texture, uh, texture type to sprite. And then I'm gonna scroll down and hit apply and you'll see it gets that nice checkered background. That means I have a birdie. Now don't do this. Don't drag the bird onto the sphere because you get that. So drag it next to the sphere. Okay, this one is a gigantic bird, so I'm going to scale him down in a second, but let's get him into the sphere to start with. There we go, scale him right down so he's a reasonable size. Okay, and then I'm going to put him up into the sky. Get up there. Whoops. Get back here. Obviously, you could spend a long time doing this but I am not going to. Need to get him so he's not clipping. All right, so I'm gonna leave my guy there. It's probably not the best spot to be honest, but you can see what I was trying to go for, okay? All right, so to make this bird clickable, the first thing I'm gonna do is drag him into the sphere. So the bird is a part of that first sphere. And if I have multiple objects I'm gonna click on, okay, it's nice and hidden underneath sphere one. But the first thing we need to do is add a sphere collider to this guy. Okay, and this green circle is what denotes how big the clickable space for this object is. Okay, you can add any kind of uh, collider if you want. You can add a box collider, capsule collider, things like that. But just make sure you have a nice solid collider around it. Okay, and before we can actually set up this guy as a clickable object, there's one little thing I missed, and that's our script. I'm going to drop this script onto the tripod. Okay, just double check that he's there. And now, what I'm going to do with the sprite is add what's called an event trigger, okay? And this allows us to make interactable objects. So I'm gonna add a new event type there, and we're gonna be using pointer down. So this is like if they click the button on the um, headset, okay? And what we can do here is add what's gonna actually happen when they press down on the button. So let's click to add an event, leave it as runtime only, and what we wanna do is we want to access that sphere changer script. So what I'm gonna do is click on the dot here, Type in tripod, because that's where I put it. You could even drag in tripod if you wanted to, by the way. Select the function from sphere changer and find the change sphere function, okay? The last thing that we need to do is specify the next sphere that we're gonna go to in this little box here. Now, because I don't have a sphere, I need to make it. So I'm gonna zoom out, quickly make this other sphere. 
So 3D object, sphere, scale. Don't worry about its position, by the way. Get rid of the collider. Call it sphere two. Make it inside out. Drop on Italy. And we're actually ready to go at this point. So if you click on the bird again, you'll see it's still got all this stuff. I'm gonna drag sphere two onto the none. Okay, and if all goes well, I should be able to mouse over my birdie. Oops, right there. You see that the reticle actually reacts to me mousing over it. And when I click the mouse, you see it fades in and out. And all of a sudden, I'm in Italy. Okay, and to make a big virtual tour for any location or a point and click adventure, you need only add as many clickable objects as you can and as many fears as you need. Okay, every single clickable object only needs to be set up exactly this way. Just make sure that every single sphere you take the collider off and every single uh, sprite or whatever it is, you add a collider, you add an event trigger, you make sure it's pointed down, and then you add in the tripod, sphere changer, change sphere, and then what sphere you're going to when they click on that object, okay? That's it, that's how you create a virtual tour using all this stuff in Unity 3D. So thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope you learned something and you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.